Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Really Ghost Thief 2. Today's mission is First City Bank and Trust, or more appropriately, the mission where shit gets real. This is the first really, really big, excellent mission in Thief 2. I absolutely love it. That said, it is very difficult. The learning curve jumps up pretty sharply here. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Here's the save from the end of eavesdropping. As always, I'm going to skip the movie. I have separately uploaded it to the playlist. Here, let's peek at our objectives. First, break into the bank. It's a large building, so they can't put a guard at every possible entrance. Second, you'll need to know the number of the deposit box the recording is in. Search for information in the Hall of Records. Three, Get inside the vault and steal the recording. Opening the vault will probably be difficult. 4. Once you've got the recording, you are free to leave. 5. Killing people is unnecessary, but destroying mechanists' security machines is not an issue. That said, of course, we won't be destroying any security machines. I'll say at the outset that supreme ghosting this mission completely is impossible because, and only because, to get into the vault, there are two sets of watchers you need to shut off. You have to turn off the watchers in the lobby, and you have to turn off the watcher that's directly facing the vault door. And turning off watchers is a supreme bust. But apart from those two busts, I've done it. It's possible to perfect supreme the rest of the mission. You can get through all of it, you can get all the loot without a single first alert, without using any consumables. In addition, you can get the two secrets and the 18 pickpockets, and just so you have an idea of where things are headed, the loot total is 2284. So, let's get started. No purchases, duh. And let's look at our map. We've got an astonishingly detailed map of First City Bank and Trust, which, you know, is pretty awesome. But here's the outside and just a map of sort of the shape of the building it might be hard to see but the bottom half is lit up to show I'm on the south side of the exterior as we pedal back we see the third floor just has something called the hall of statues and is smaller than the others but I'll go ahead and tell you that this room here is the security office which we need to get to to turn off the cameras in the lobby here's a map of the second floor there's the Hall of Records. One of our objectives is in there. The vault is marked here, but you can't get into it from this floor. You have to do so on the ground level. And other than that, you've got something called the Great Hall, something called the Dome, a guard room, a lobby, a meeting hall. On the first floor, you see a couple of passages to the basement in addition to the ground levels of all the rooms we saw above. Uh, we get into the vault on the first floor, and like I said, there's an archer or a watcher right here that stares directly at the door that we'll have to turn off just to ghost the mission. The other option is to try and sneak through the guard. Well, that watcher you have to turn off no matter what. I also turn off the watchers in the lobby because then that way you can sneak into the vault through this area. The other option is to try and move directly through the guard room, which I am not sure is possible. I really don't think it is. Maybe there's a way to do it. I don't know, but anyway, I turn off the lobby watchers. Other than that, you have your notes page, and get ready. This mission is awesome, but it's going to take a long time, and it's going to be hard. The first thing that we're going to do is get the four pickpockets that can be had outside. I'm going to head around to the west. There are two little packs of three patrollers, one on one that covers the north half and one that covers the south half. You can't quite make a full circle around the bank. You want to go down the ladder in this tool shed, then you can run through this tunnel. There's a wall on the east side that you can't get over, which means you have to run back and forth. So I come and get the picks from the north side guys first. 
can ever. Not too hard at all. If you can beat him to this shed. There's the first and second of 18 pickpockets. That will go back the way we came. The reason I do the south side second is because the entrance to the bank that we'll take is on the south side of that wall in the east. So we have to go that way to get in through the basement. I think it's possible to take some other entrances, but uh, the basement is the simplest and it makes the most sense in terms of order. This will be a lot more important later. We've already seen such behavior in a couple of places, and you see it in the packs of three out here, but I'll describe it now. In Thief 2, in certain places, the patrols are programmed differently than they were in Thief Gold. With both of these packs of three, rather than having patrol points, two of the patrollers, the two in the back, instead have the lead patroller set as their patrol point. That would be the middle guy. And the back guy has the middle guy set as his patrol point. This doesn't so much matter now, although it does lead to some weird behavior where you'll see one guy who gets separated sprinting to catch up with the pack. Where it really becomes relevant is kidnap, because Cavador and his entourage are set up that way, which makes the black necessary blackjacking very interesting. What was that? What? Pretty what? tough to pull off. So I think if I get as far forward as possible here, I might be able to lean forward and get <clears> third <throat> and fourth picks. There's three and four out of 18. Perfect. So now wait for those guys to pass by. Yeah, you saw my practice run was two and a half hours of game registered playtime. Probably took more like four. With all the saving and reloading I had to do. So let those guys squeak by. This will be our eventual exit, that balcony right there. But oh, we are a long way from that. So here's that wall I was talking about here on the east side, separating north from south, and here is our entrance. This basement window, which we'll just pick open. There's no way to relock this, so we don't have to worry about it. There we go. We have gotten inside the bank. With that milestone complete, I'm going to do a real save. Now, there's not a whole lot going on in the basement. I'm going to go ahead and clear it. It's far and away the easiest segment of the mission. But, you know, I'll do it anyway. So, there's nothing down here at first. So you can blow through all these rooms. The... I guess it's on the west in this hallway. This storage room has a gold candlestick. <laughs> Some people in this city are too rich Not for their own good. Whoa! I have to admit, that's a first for me. Granted, I haven't played Thief 2 that many times, but I have never seen a guard down here. Amazing. Some people in this city are too rich for their own good. Lucky they have me to give them a hand. Well, there you go. This game can always surprise you. But that candlestick is just worth 25. Get past that guy. <clears throat> we will take this ramp up to the third floor. That footlocker just has a flare in it. This one has a gold plate worth another 25, brings our total to 50. But before we go upstairs, we should go ahead and open the time lock on the vault. Let's move back here. 
Warning, maintenance, maintenance machines active in this area. I can speak, I promise. But, uh... Despite the intense music, everything down here, well, in this section of the basement, are the, uh, blind little robots that don't really do anything to you unless you make a noise. So just carefully creep over these metal plates and take care not to, uh, bump into them or get bumped into. And... Everything will be just fine. This pool of water has two water arrows in it, if you're so inclined. Just keep going through these tunnels. Keep out. Authorized personnel only beyond this point. The basement is far and away the easiest thing we're going to do. But it makes sense to do it first. So, a few, thi a few things to be aware of. There's a band of pressure plates in front of me. The first four squares coming out from the right are pressure plates. make sure to get around them without stepping on them. Obviously, there's a fully functional iron beast over there, and around this corner is a watcher. But here's the thing that makes getting through this mission a lot easier for me. Remembering that much like the little robots are blind, watchers are deaf. So if there's nothing in a room but watchers, you can make as much noise as you want. That makes getting by... Just keeping that in mind makes things significantly easier. Anyway, open the gate next to the watcher and slip through when it's turned away. A neat little Easter egg that they put into this mission that I haven't seen but have just read about. The vault is on a time lock. If you're in the mission for eight hours, the vault will open on its own because it's ostensibly Monday. Or morning. What a and weird contraption. Let's see what these controls do. So, for Supreme, we want to put these buttons back the way they were when we're finished. So, we have the bottom two on the left, and the top one on the right sticking out. Anyway, I don't actually know what that puzzle is, I just kind of play with it. I guess at some point I had them all out. But I put the buttons back the way they were, and you'll notice that the lock didn't reclose. So, anyway, that's as close as we can manage for Supreme. So, get right back under the watcher. It's also definitely worth understanding that watchers are completely blind to the area directly underneath them. So we'll reclose the gate, get right back out here. Get around the traps. Now we have to sneak back through the maintenance area. Remember, as always, let go of the jump key about halfway through the mantle, and Garrett should be quiet when he gets to the top.
All right, that's it. Now, I don't really bother attacking the first floor until I get the lobby camera shut off, so I'm just going to pass through it and tackle most of the second floor first. So, get up under the water. There is a guy who patrols in here. He has an extremely... Oh, that was a mistake, actually. Apologies. Wait till the watcher's turning away, and then let's look at our map. So we're coming up this staircase right here. I just want to get east and immediately head up to the second floor on this staircase. There is a guy who patrols through here with a pretty long patrol route, so there's a chance you'll run into him, but it's not worth waiting for or worrying about just saving. If you happen to bump into him, suck it up and reload. So the thing to do is wait for it to turn away, then mantle up, bust it through this door. Gotta be a little quicker than that. But you see what I'm saying. That little chitter, by the way, that's what a first alert from a watcher sounds like. We don't want any of that. So that was fine. Good. So now... The little robots roam all over this mission, as do the human guards. It's extremely difficult to really focusedly overcome their patrols, so don't worry too much about it. So, right up at the top of those steps is another piece of loot. Be careful of the tile floor. And grab that vase. It's worth 50. Brings your total to 100 if you're following the route I am. Now there's a lot to do up here. Let me figure out the order I want to do it in. <laughs> I just kind of brute forced this last time. But now I should probably, you know, think about a sensible order of operations, that sort of thing. The. <clears throat> Hall of Records is an objective, and there's a little bit of loot in there. So I think what makes the most sense is to head through there first. Tick off the objective, get the loot from here, bounce down and clear these offices. There's some loot down here that we want to get. And then there's a little bit over here too. And then these passages are locked. We'll actually take the central staircase up to the third floor. And so actually I should do this first. There's a very difficult piece of loot over here and there's this office, and then, yeah, that turns into a dead end, so I'm gonna do that first. Okay. Plan made. We disembark. So. Follow that little robot. You have to listen very carefully to what the robots say. And you also have to be able to distinguish the patrollers from the two malfunctioning robots who say some first alert comments, even if you're nowhere near the room. So get some copper coins out of that shelf. They're only worth five. They bring the total to 105. Around back here is some reading material. Parcel. I hear there's a coppermonger on Center Street who's offering good prices for halfpence minted more than 20 years ago. Something about luck charms. Guess the luck of the city's been pretty bad the past couple decades. What think you? The pair of us go through the halfpenny stores after hours tonight? Will. Yeah. 
Yeah, the ones talking about dangerous conditions and a malfunction. Okay. Well, there you see that. Hold on a minute. Sorry about that. Phone call. Anyway, those watchers are first alerting like bosses. Anyway, that is apparently a fairly common bug, although I did not encounter it on my trial run, but it's going to make things more interesting, that's for sure. So this is the first area where the silence of watchers, or the deafness of watchers, is really relevant, but we have to wait until all the little robots are clear of the room. And then there will be a time when both watchers are facing away, and we can just sprint up, grab the vase, and sprint back out. Because we don't have to worry about our sound, even though it's a tile floor. Oh, so close. Let's try right away. All right, who's making the rocket? Ah, uh, you gave yourself away that time. All right, sounds like someone's underneath us and can hear us. Have to wait for them to be gone too. This is what makes this mission so hard. Just all the multiple levels and everybody on every level can detect you, plus people can see through windows. It's tough. Not a whole lot else to say about it. Right away is a good bet, though. In terms of when to sprint, so. Or maybe wait a beat, one. Well, if Garrett could grab the vase on his first try. And aim at the door. Another thing to notice about watchers is that their rotational patterns always reset when you quick load to whatever their square one is. Okay, I may need to wait. Okay, this is going to be perfect. Please be 
There we go. So, with that vase, which is worth another 50, our total comes up to 155. Which is great. Now be careful, the cameras can see you through these windows. It can be hard to hear if they alert, too, so... Just kind of got to watch. That guy is supposed to be patrolling in here. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get his pickpocket with him stuck there, but... That's something to worry about later. Alright, with that little side trip done, we can handle the Hall of Records. Now there's a watcher on the far end of this room. But the alcove down into the Hall of Records itself has a very handy, perfect shadow in it. So if we can sprint across the room and get there, probably while it's turned to the right, I think would be our best bet. Too soon. So just get somewhere where you can watch its rotational pattern a little bit. Still went too soon. Wait until you see that green, yellow, red indicator kind of swing around. Bust it over here and... Okay, didn't go soon enough. You have to get flush with the wall, that's my problem. This mission is full of tricky little spots like this. Oh, come on now, I thought I got to the spot that time. Maybe if I start a little closer. Here we go. Yeah, I'll be able to do this. I'm just waiting a little too long now. Perfect. Done. Save with that accomplished. Wait for it to turn away again. Slip into the Hall of Records. Now to find some useful information. There's nothing in here, which is nice. Nothing comes in here either. But this is the only thing of value, our objective. Just have to read it. Client, box number, Lord Signoli, 7, DM Gilver Exporting, 8, to the Widow's Hospice, 9, Mechanist Secondary Finance Box, 10, Mechanist Storage Box, 11, Sergeant Bander, 12, Lady Sheminoff, 13, Selentura, 14. And that ticks off our Hall of Records objective. Now, all that's left is getting into the vault and looting the bank, of course. So remember that the safety deposit box to break into is number 11. So we need to get that vase at the end of the room. So when he turns to face south, we'll sprint over under him. Pick that bad boy up. It's another 50, brings our total to 205. And then as he turns north, move up here. To this balcony, overlooking the meeting room. And don't squat down where I did. Go here instead, where he can't see you. So we want to get down to the 
walkway we just saw that archer on. I find the best best way to do it is just to rope up to the rafters. There's a conversation going on. I can't, I'm not close enough to hear what they're saying. I'm sorry about that. Now fire another rope into the rafter across the way. Oh, I guess he heard us fire the rope. So wait a bit. Then fire a rope. And then you kind of have to uh, back off this way and jump at a diagonal. Oh, dang it. I forgot about that guy. Oh! And there you see why we can't just slide off the rafter. I've made this drop before. Maybe we just need to hop down a little. Rafter hop a little farther so he doesn't hear us land. Oh! Can't have that though. Mm mm. Oh. Can't have that either. Garrett's got to jump. <sighs> oh. Okay. Well, let's do this. We'll get to the rafter that way. Well, that would have been perfect, if not for the camera. <sighs> but I don't think I could repeat that move. So, let's hop to the next rafter. And maybe we'll be able to get down that way. There we go. So with that descent made, we'll make a real save. Never ask for it back. Wow. Could be. I keep home locked up myself. Safer that way. <clears throat> this is a good spot to wait for that archer to come back through and grab his pickpocket. There's six pickpockets to be had on the second floor, by the way. With that done, we can move into this room. You see the Iron Beast there? We're gonna wait until it's moving away and follow it. We don't have a whole lot of time because the Archer's gonna come back, but... Get these two coins while you're here. And then if you get over to this side of this shelf, you're safe. Two more coin stacks there. Two golds, two silvers brings our total to 279. So wait until it's headed the other way again, and then we'll slip into the next room over. 
You have to be careful, very careful with this guy. This is not a safe place because the archer can see you there when he comes back through. But if you get over here, this is. Six pieces of loot, two coin stacks and four little coin pairs on top of this shelf bring our total to 297. There are the archers back. There's one of those random swordsmen with long routes. Let's see exactly where I am. Okay, we're in this room now. So, if I head this way, I don't think there is anything. So, yeah, we want that, that, that stuff. Okay. I know where I am. Let's read this right quick. All clerks, this is not a bakery. We do not throw in an extra coin for every 12. Individual logbooks will be audited weekly. Now, the best way to get over there without getting spotted by the Iron Beast is to wait until it's out of sight and then mantle up over this shelf. <sighs> and then just slide down into this handy shadow. Let's make sure he didn't hear that drop. He didn't. Good. Now we want to move into that office. And get the loot out of there. We do have to be wary of that swordsman. He, I think he'll come back through here soon. <coughs> yeah, here he comes. Let's not go in there until he comes back through. Until his back is turned. Get the coins. Read. I have oft wondered these past days why Master Banker Tyler has been in such a disposition. Frequently he comes in late or not at all and his former liveliness is gone. For weeks now he has seemed to droop and mope, his spirits quite downcast. Though he has passed the prime of his life, not so his career. In time he could rise to a new pinnacle of wealth and power. At first I thought he was forlorn that the bank did not ride the financial winds of change in the city as best it might, that change marks an opportunity for wealth that we have missed. I thought perhaps Master Tyler erroneously took on a burden for being neglectful, but now I fear that his situation is worse, that misfortune has befallen him or his family. Then we need to pick open this safe. There's a purse in here. Brings our total to 384. Then I want to get out here before their conversation ends. Changing procedures. Just get out of my office. Oh, dang it. Just not paying attention. Something moved there. Sorry about that, folks. I forgot about that watcher. I got so excited. <laughs> so, red. Coins. Purse. Pair offices. 
Uh, oh, really? That's very fascinating. Now, let's try again to get into the bar. Just be careful about the watcher. Okay, now we've got some extra time, which is good. scared me nearly half to death. Because their conversation restarts unless they've finished it. Jump in. Too slow. But you get the idea. Jump in as it turns away. And get under it. Grab that vase. Worth 50 brings our total to 434. Amazon! How else are the Rothschild papers to be finished? Magic spells? Well, sir, they, they don't tell us the hours of the bankers who pay for the spare offices. Oh, really? That's very fascinating. Please, th tell me more particulars about guard duties. Hmm. So he's... The guards are going to come out of the office, and he's got two pickpockets we want. Arrows and the key. Just get out of my office. Now we want to get to this shadow and save. This is a great shadow to save, be in, because it's completely safe. Now we want to use that key to get into the office. We'll leave the watcher on, there's no need to deactivate it. We'll just creep in here and get this pickpocket. That's our eighth. Yes, four outside the first archer, the two we just got. So yes, that's eight pickpockets out of 18. So drop that. 